I never lost my passion, no, to to be a violinist. My my dreams, no. I always wanted to be a violinist, so I, I was really working hard for it. But uh, at the same time, I had to work usually in the nights mm-hmm. or in weddings. I, I started surviving very well, actually, better than my friends. Killer. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ara. I appreciate your time. Uh, this Thank is a you. podcast about you and your journey in music and uh, how you got to where you are now. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Oh, thank you. So uh, first off, talk to me about where you were born and raised. Well, I'm born in Lebanon, in Beirut. Mm-hmm. From, I come from an Armenian family. And uh, when I was 15 years old, I left uh, Lebanon which was in the middle of the civil war and I went to to Europe and I I lived the rest of my life in Europe between uh, Germany, London, France and and Spain. Yeah, music kind of moved you around, correct? Yeah, I moved quite a lot around. Also I moved a lot around because of uh, of of the my, my my profession, no, of making music, maybe yeah. I made music all around the, the world. With different musicians, and uh, it made me keep me busy. <laughs> yeah, I did. I was reading. You come from a musical household. Was it was your father a violinist as well? My father was a violinist. He was uh, obsessed of violin. He was uh, ob- he absolutely he had an obsession with uh, violin. He loved violin. He loved uh, music. So he decided that I should play the violin even before i was born so i had no <laughs> he knew i had no choice i had no <laughs> choice thank god i loved uh, i loved it if not i would have i would have had the most miserable life in life in right life, but... i mean can you imagine if you're like yeah i'm not really ha- i'm not having this and he's like you are going to play it anyway <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah um... he forced me he forced me at the beginning he was he was very severe with me so but now now, nowadays, I'm uh, eternally thankful to him because he, he he made my life. He made my he made me happy, and I'm I'm very happy. That's incredible. Yeah, I've, heard, I've I've heard this story with people that family like kind of pushed him into piano lessons or something at his kid. Like, yeah, I hated him up until you know a few years in, and then it, I'm so glad that they did. Or now I'm the only reason why I'm a songwriter or a musician is because of that. So. Um, well, I actually I never really hated it because I I loved uh, he, he he transmitted to me also the, the love of music, no? And he explained to me, and I loved music. But when you are ten years old, uh, I I didn't really like uh, spending hours and hours in in a, in a room practicing and uh, sure. not being able to to play with my friends and. Uh, to go out so that was quite hard so mm-hmm. but, but that's life how old were you when you started playing the violin or like how old were you when your dad was like here you go well i think i started really early which i didn't don't even remember i think i started uh, when i was three but seriously uh-huh. where i was like uh, like i started having a discipline was when i was seven eight years old or so okay and you played what I read that you were like, you played in like a bomb shelter. Like, what was this story? Like, this is like, well, this, this sounds very dramatic. Uh, well, I, I imagine it was a bit dramatic, but uh, <laughs> yeah, with, I can imagine. I mean, being in the midst of a but civil it was war. The, the whole, whole country in the same situation. And of course, we had to stay uh, many hours in the in the bomb shelters now because we had to hide from the from the bombings. But life goes on even if you are in a bomb shelter. So, so people, uh, we used to have fun there. So so I used to play the violin, other ones used to dance, other ones used to sing, and uh, we used to play. So time has to go by. And uh, I think the worse the situation was, the, the more we were trying to to find some occupation so that we can distract it from what the reality was mm-hmm. so when i'm just curious with with the bomb shelter was it you it was it like a massive thing where it's not just your family there's just like a bunch of people in it or like like what, yeah. what are you looking at as far as like yeah, how long the, are you do you have to stay in there 
we, we we used to live in a quite big building where there were many neighbors. So okay. we we were like I don't know, I don't know, maybe 20, 20 families or, or so. And the 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 the, the Okay, the garage. Well, it was a garage actually. It wasn't bomb. It wasn't a bomb shelter. It was a garage. Uh, okay. Had three, three, three stairs. So it was a quite big garage. So it was quite safe one. So we were mm-hmm. quite happy there to be there. Okay, yeah, because I'm just imagining like you're underground. Like you open the thing and you're like going down in this like little room, like the size of like this room I'm in right now or something. But it was you is fairly big, and. There was more people in there than it was than it was just like you and your family secluded yeah, in this one room it, forever. It was, it was it was very big. Well, when you are when you are you are child, it I, I, it seemed to me that it was huge. Like right. uh, six seven years ago, for the first time after like uh, forty years, I went back there, and oh, really? I realized it was just tiny. <laughs> oh, I bet. It was, yeah, it was tiny. Well. It wasn't that tiny, but uh, it was much more smaller than what I imagined when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. And you, wow, wow, was that, that must have been kind of emotional going back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was quite emotional. Uh, we went back there because my my wife did a documentary, so we we've been shooting all the places i lived and all the places i visited and it was quite uh, it was nice also very hard to yeah. to go back to the memories no but it was very emotional feelings mm-hmm. wow 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 and then how like how long were you in that situation for well um, i left lebanon when i was 14 and so that was all uh, still happening when you left. Yeah, it was in the okay. middle of the world. I mean, that was a bit the reason why I left Lebanon because mm-hmm. it was impossible to leave, and the war started in uh, in seventy six, and I left in eighty four, and it was in the middle of the world. My my parents stayed there, and I went on my own to to Germany, which mm-hmm. for me was even more difficult to to survive a war because I went to Germany without knowing anybody, without, without my parents, without any friends, without knowing the language, the country, the culture. So the first two years I had quite a difficult time. Oh, I can imagine. I mean, even even if you were in your 20s, that would be hard, Not a, let alone being <laughs> like 15 years old or 14 years yeah. old going and, and, and having to, to take that on. Wow. Um, so you played your first concert at 12 years old. Was that in Lebanon? Like, where was that concert? Like, where did that take place? Well, it was at the American University, which the, in, in Lebanon, the American University is a very nice university. They have a quite nice hall. And they, that, that, that's what the, 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 the Lebanese used to, we used to do. I mean, as soon as we had some, uh, some break of bombings, People used to think that the war is over, so everything seemed like it was normalized. So oh, okay. we we organized concerts. There was a cultural life. There was a nightlife, and uh, until the next bombing starts, no. So while there is a break in the ceasefire, mm-hmm. where, while they were respecting ceasefire, but life goes on, and uh, we were all we used to go out of our our. our or bunkers and uh, and uh, you make try to make life f- fake that we have a normal life right so there were these like i'm sure it's these like these small pauses in in the war and that allowed like life to kind of go on for a little bit and yeah. then once it started up again it's like okay now we're all gonna have to go seclude again yeah it was, wow exactly like that oh my so then you get to germany at 15 and you're the youngest ever admitted into this music school, right, in Germany. And that's kind of what took you out of Lebanon. Was were you in? Were, did you already get accepted to the school prior to moving, or did you move and then like go? Okay, well maybe I can get into this this really prestigious well, they, music they, school. Um, we before I went to Germany, I I applied in several uh, music academies around around the world 
in France, in Germany, in, in, in Italy, in England. So, and then they, they accepted me in Germany. Uh, that was the, the place I, the less I wanted to go because I, I at that time I, I knew how to speak French. No, I, the easiest would be to go to, to France, but, France, uh, yeah. but, but Germany accepted. So I went to Germany. They were supposed to give me a scholarship at the end. They didn't give me because I had to be, I was minor. Uh, I was 15. So I had to accomplish 18 so that they give me the scholarship. So I was, I had to wait three years until I had, I, I got the scholarship. So I had to survive. I started playing all over the places in bars, in restaurants, in the streets, in, in weddings, in, but it was quite fun, actually. I, I when I when I tell the, the stories, it seemed like it was a very harsh time, but uh, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I mean, so you get there at fifteen, and you don't. It's not like you you get admitted to the school, but you're not like going, right? I mean, it sounds like they admit you, and you're like, okay, cool, and they're like, yeah, now it's gonna cost. Here's the bill, and you're like, uh, now like I can't, you know, do this. I need to wait to get some scholarships. So for three years, you're still in Germany, just working yeah. and trying no, to make I, a living. I, I I went to the to the academy. I was okay. accepted in the academy, but the scholarship I didn't get it until I was eighteen. Oh, so, I understand. So see, I was I, I was studying. I was studying like a madman. I was studying twelve hours a day. But you're because, working to pay for it. Yeah, well, I, I was studying uh, my violin because I yeah. wanted to. I, I never lost my passion, no, to to be a violinist. My my dreams, no, I always wanted to be a violinist, so I, I was really working hard for it. But uh, at the same time, I had to work in the in usually in the nights mm -hmm. or in weddings so that I can I can survive. And I, I started surviving very well, actually, better than my friends, be, better than I would have the scholarship, actually. Wow. Um, so once you once you complete the school, then what's what's next? Do you like how do you get to the next kind of level? Like, do you, are you do you go to try to join some orchestra or like 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 what's kind of the path? Well, I've been trying a lot of things actually. I first first I, I started making a lot of competitions because competitions allows you to get known and mm -hmm. uh, allows you to earn some money. But it's not the best solution to to have an important career. No, it helps you, uh, but it's not a solution. So I did a lot of competitions, and then uh, I started making concerts. I started uh, trying to make a name, which is quite difficult in this world. So and then I I do I did, I did quite a lot of tours. And things got better little by little. They did not think didn't get better from one day to another. So and then I I discovered Spain. I loved it. I went. I moved in Spain, and uh, there I I went. I entered the opera house. Yeah, I started playing in an orchestra. I was the leader of the orchestra, and I started. I played there in the orchestra for seven years until I I got bored completely bored. Because I thought that's nothing to do with art, no. They're playing in an orchestra, playing in an orchestral pit in the in the dark, and uh, everybody, nobody sees you in the, right. in the audience. So it was it was nice period because we used to play beautiful music, opera, symphonies. But uh, I I needed uh, to go back to some bohemian life, no, some insecurity because I had a uh, I had a great salary, I had a lot of time, but I didn't have motivation. So one day to another, I decided to leave the orchestra and to go back doing my own things, my own compositions, my own uh, projects. And it, since then, this, this was almost like uh, 18 years ago and things got better than ever. Sure. I mean, like, because yeah, you... When, when I think of a violin player, like that's what I'm imagining, you know, it's just like an orchestra player, like kind of buttoned up and suits. And you see you come out, you know, you're you have tattoos, 
and like you're just like playing the violin like it's some like you know like a rock instrument and like just like the way you move around on stage like you're such a performer and you're so great at what you do like was that something like definitely so unique to what most people think of when you go oh this this guy you know he's a violinist and it's like but then you watch your show and it's just like not <laughs> the typical well, violinist piece that you would I, at least i would imagine like how like were you, was that kind of your stage presence all like has that always kind of been what you did and that's why when you're no, 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 put in I, the I, orchestra I, I you're like well, i'm I kind of constricted that. here I discovered my my personality little by little. When I left the orchestra, I started uh, I started experimenting things. No, I started uh, I see I saw I I saw that uh, I wasn't made for the strictly classical world. No, I right. was I wasn't feeling at home. I wasn't feeling in my skin. So. Little by little, I, I dared to go out of that world, and I started making my own world. And uh, I started making my own concerts with my own projects, and uh, and things has changed. And I, I realized that I I don't need to to be false. No, I don't need, need to imitate classical musicians because I play classical music. I just need to be myself and uh, do what I like. And sometimes I play Bach, but sometimes I can also play Jimi Hendrix and sometimes <laughs> I play my own compositions. I, I just do, uh, I play what, what, whatever I, I want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so, it's just like I said, it, when I, when you picture what, just the tip, like, you know, most stereotypical, like what a violinist like would be doing and performing on stage. And then you see what you're doing is just so, such a different world but it's so rad and it's so like i feel like you you're you just brought in your your spectrum of any like fans and in any i mean anyone it's just it's really cool what you're doing thank you thanks a lot thank you um i was gonna ask like what would you say kind of in that period after you left um you know after you left the orchestra like doing going back to more that you said the bohemian lifestyle like kind of the touring and and doing that like what would you say that like a big milestone was for you was there a moment you're like wow this is really starting to take off or like that you totally see like a, a switch in you know something musically for you or was there a big song or record that you played on i mean obviously you've won grammys and stuff like that but like was there also something else in there well there, there was actually there nothing happened just that changed my life one day to another things were gradually and that, that's the nice thing because I think if, for an artist, if things changes from one day to another, it you can get mad. No, you can you cannot. Uh, it ha can happen that you don't uh, cope with the with the success. No, so mm -hmm. as in in my case, thing thing got better little by little. I I, I always I always had my feet on on earth. So I I I enjoyed every moment. No, I enjoyed and. Uh, Every time my audience would grow up and uh, I end up uh, playing for audiences for over 15,000 people. So yeah. I was very, very thankful. No? And uh, I started touring all, all around the world. And uh, I, I wish when I, I, I really thankful of the of, of my faith. Mm -hmm. Was there like a, but do you, can you recall like a, a like a, a moment in time that you, like a, a venue or something that you played and you're like, I cannot believe this moment is happening right now? Well, maybe the, in Spain, we, we, we dare to organize very big concerts for like uh, 15 or 18,000 people, which was a very big risk because, uh, it wasn't really seen a lot uh, that a violinist can uh, can feel so so many <laughs> draw <souls>. that big <laughs> so many people no so we risked because also we also risked we we risked it because we produced ourselves no uh -huh. you cannot convince many produ pro producer to do such a crazy thing so we did it ourselves and things got amazing i mean people came people uh, repeats nowadays and uh, and uh, so maybe yeah the first concert which was like uh, 10 years ago 
it was a big risk and things got really well and that was the changing point maybe to mm -hmm. that things can be possible yeah that's incredible uh, i have a few uh, just a couple more questions for you i want to know like where when when the pandemic happened did that i mean obviously it affected everybody but for you, were you able to work on like, you know, I know you've done some scoring or like other writing your own albums or compositions. Were you able to, to focus on that at all? Because I, I would imagine touring has to be a big part of, you know, your career, obviously. So that gets taken away. Like, how did you respond well, to that? You know, there, there as well, we had quite, we were quite lucky because before the pandemic year, we were touring with a big band of like almost 10 musicians and doing big places and so on and once the pandemic started we had to stop for like three months three or four months mm -hmm. but um, in spain we were able to make small concerts very like uh, intimate concerts for like 300 400 people and that was uh, we were very lucky because we like sometimes we used to do three concerts a day in wow. uh, for 300 people people were uh, respecting all the social distance with masks and everything so uh, we never really stopped doing concerts and in in during the two years of pandemic uh, period we we've done over 200 concerts different concerts but very emotional concerts because uh, despite all the difficulties despite all the the fear no that people th thought that if we went to a concert we're gonna get sick no or right. you're gonna get infected but people they needed that they needed to to listen concert to to consume culture art and uh, and we were very very lucky to be able to do so many concerts different ones but uh, but uh, marvelous concerts mm -hmm. and you just got off a massive tour right like 90 something shows over the past year yeah, so now now we are back on on tour and uh, we 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 are doing all, all the all the gigs we we couldn't do during the pandemic year. So we are back on in in all oh. the countries we've been in, we've been just in Argentina, in Uruguay, in Chile, in Colombia, and now we're gonna go to the states. We're gonna go to all the rest of Europe. So now it's very very busy again. So. Yeah, you get to play God. Carnegie Hall, right? I mean, that must be a, such a big moment. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's a dream which I, I had it since I was I, I, since I I thought I will be a classical musician. So so now I'm gonna realize this dream. <laughs> really? So that you've just it's just been something that you've always wanted to do. Is there like particular? Just it's just because of the you know the reputation at hand, or yeah, I think. If for the classical music to play at the Carnegie Hall is uh, is the most you can dream of. I mean, is 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 like playing in Madison Square Garden. Sure, sure. Uh, but in the classical world, no. So it, also there is Carnegie Hall. He has uh, such a history. No, there were there were so so many amazing artists as as I uh, has played there. So. We are, it's, it's, it's a big deal for me to, to play there. Mm -hmm. Do you remember getting that call or like the, the, the news that you were going to play Carnegie Hall? Sorry? Sorry? Do you remember getting the news that you were going to be playing there? Well, we were, we were thinking about it. So it's not that um, we didn't, we were thinking about the halls and the, which hall that we So I, I was part of the, part oh, of the, the decision the booking. I had to okay. it. So, so it was it wasn't like a surprise it was a meditated uh, decision a moment yeah that's amazing well thank you so much for doing this uh i know you, you've got to be somewhere out and i appreciate you taking time to do this but i wanted to know if you have any advice for aspiring artists before i let you go yeah well i think the most important thing of all is to be out to authenticity. I mean, to be your own self, no, not to not to do something for the others, no, just to be yourself and uh, to use to be to use your own personality to to work hard. Of course, I mean that's the it's very important, 
and uh, to believe, to believe in you. You have to believe in you. I love that. Thank you so much, Ari. I appreciate your time today, Thank man. Thank you. Thanks you a, a lot. Yeah, have Good a great luck. rest of your day. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.